So most bikes have a bunch of black parts on them, and here these cranks you can see are a little worn away there. Now if you want to get your bike in super showroom condition, you can take a black Sharpie and just touch it up. Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. I'm sure many of you know about the Sharpie hack, and I'm sure you also know that you could use actual touch-up paint if you want to do it right, but that's what makes this a hack. You're using something that's not necessarily designed for the job, but it also works, and that's what hacks are about. And we're gonna be going over 10 of them today related to mountain biking. Let's get on to the second one. So this right here is a Fox 36, a really legit mountain bike fork, and it looks it. There's just something about it that looks serious. Well, maybe you have a cheap fork like this, this Suntour fork that comes on a lot of entry-level bikes. I'm gonna show you how to make it look more legit. So first things first, you wanna take all the stickers off of it. That part might take a little bit of time. So you're gonna need this tool. I left a link to it in the description, just a few bucks, so you can remove the caps on the top of your fork. Then flip it upside down and the springs are gonna come out. They're gonna be real dirty. If you clean these up and re-grease them, it'll actually make the fork run a little bit better. Yeah, this, this fork's seen hell. You're gonna then loosen these two bolts on the bottom of the fork. And then at a certain point, you're gonna need a 300 foot socket extension with a five millimeter hex on the end. So we're just gonna pull the lowers right off. And now we can take our little red O-ring and put it up on there just like a high-end fork. So while we have this apart, I'm gonna clean it all up. I'm gonna put new grease in the fork and put it back together so that it runs like new. Now it looks legit exactly like a RockShox fork or a Fox fork. Maybe not exactly, but pretty damn close. And this is functional. You can push it down at the beginning of your ride and see where it is afterwards, see whether you need to increase your preload or reduce it. Pretty fun little hack. Doesn't require a few tools, but you'll be the only one on the trail with an O-ring on your Suntour fork. So you got a vinyl bicycle seat with all sorts of crazy colors, or maybe it's old and tired and you wanna freshen it up you can actually paint it. What if I were to tell you that this seat wasn't always black? They actually sell vinyl paint. You can get it at any hardware store. Probably use normal spray paint. Basically, all you have to do is sand the seat down very, very lightly all over, make sure it's really, really clean, there's no oils or anything on it, and then put very, very light coats of paint on it until it's whatever color you want it to be. And the best part is, it comes out so good, it looks like it was born that way. Damn, that looks good. And yeah, you can sit on it. The seat can flex, you can abuse it, and it will stay painted. You can inspect this really, really close. There's not a flaw in it. We were really surprised to find that out when we researched it, that painting a vinyl bike seat, actually no big deal. So on most mountain bikes or gravel bikes, you're gonna find a whole bunch of little bolts, like the ones that hold on your bottle cages, the ones that are made to hold luggage racks, and then also bolts like the ones that hold on your disc rotors. Well, it turns out that all these bolts are the same size and thread. And the reason this is important is that disc rotor bolts are available in all sorts of different anodized colors. They're lower profile, they look way better than water bottle cage bolts. And if you like customizing your bike, this is a really cheap and easy way to do it because there's lots of blank areas like those luggage rack bolts that you can change to whatever color you want and give the bike a little pop. Another appearance mod, but hey, you might not have known that disc rotor bolts are the same thread as water bottle cages and luggage rack bolts. So if you've seen our flip bike series, we fix up a lot of bikes and we also restore individual bike parts. Sometimes it involves cleaning them so we can paint them or just make them look better. And so I wanna show you a hack today, how to make a sandblaster out of an air compressor and one of these little compressed air attachments. So to do this, you're gonna need your air sprayer, you're gonna need a water bottle, and of course, you're gonna need some sand. You're also gonna need some tools to modify your air sprayer. First thing we're gonna do is drill a hole in the base of the bottle so that this makes an airtight seal through it. Cool, that's what we were going for. 
Next, we have to modify the tip of this. And we wanna open a little channel right in this part of the sprayer. And I'm gonna just do it with an angle grinder. I think I'm gonna turn this into like a hopper. So we've got our water bottle, we've got our sprayer. Now we're gonna test it. Okay, so now you can see that the sprayer is in here and the little opening that we made is right at the bottom so that the sand is going to fall into it. Get a healthy amount of sand in there. Probably dry off the inside of your bottle better than I did. Let's see how it works. Oh yeah. Yeah, that sprays some... Dude, there's stuff going everywhere. Yeah, maybe I'll just go out here. Okay, so here's the dirty part. I'm gonna spray right here and see if we can clean it up. Are you as amazed as I am? Dude, I mean, that is insane. I wonder if we can take the paint off of something. Dude, immediately. So yeah, the, the problem is, A, I think I made the hole too big, and B, that, that you can't take the top off of this. You have to leave the top on. And then C, um, you want better sand. That's not gonna jam the thing up. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple little adjustments here to our design just to make the prototype work better and we'll try her again. I would say the design doesn't call for hot glue, but you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Gotta get your due. Sometimes it takes hot glue. This is gonna work amazing. All right, so that's the current state of our derailleur. We're gonna try and blow the rest of the paint off of this with our revised sandblaster. It freaking worked! Look at this! <laughs> Proof of concept works. It's a hack. So we're all mountain bikers, right? And mountain bikers wear clothes when they're riding mountain bikes, and those clothes get stains. Uh, depending on the trail, the stains might be in your underwear, but other times, they're actually blood stains on your clothes. Now, I have a real blood stain here. I harvested it from a bug bite, and I'm gonna show you how to get it out. Usually, a blood stain is considered a death sentence for a garment, but hydrogen peroxide works as well on clothes as it does in one of your wounds. So we're gonna pour a little bit on here, and you can see that foaming action on the blood, just like when you're cleaning out cut or scrape. And the sooner you can get to it, the better the chance you're gonna be able to get the blood stain out completely. I think we're gonna get this 100% out. And yeah, this is one of those hacks that 100% of the time a mountain biker is gonna run into needing to do it. And as you can see, we've got pretty much the whole blood stain out. Yeah, it's like it just eats blood. And that's it, so this is not dry. We've got almost the entire stain out. Had we caught it a little bit earlier, I think it would have come out completely. But yeah, you be the judge. Is there a better way to get blood out? I think this is pretty much it. And as a mountain biker, at some point, you're gonna stain up some of your clothes with blood. So eye protection's really important when you're riding downhill because a bug or a branch or anything could go into your eye. But when you're climbing, a lot more comfortable to ride without eye protection, and one of my subscribers sent in a hack for a glasses holder right on your handlebar. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you're just gonna need two zip ties. I'm using two different colors. Make a little loop like that, then attach that to your handlebars, then go ahead, cut off the excess, and now when you're climbing, or you just don't need your glasses, you can stick them in here, and they're not gonna go anywhere. I mean, that doesn't look like it's gonna come loose. So thanks Marcel from Switzerland for sending that one in. I think it's a pretty good hack and I might actually use it. So part of having a good ride is staying hydrated, but not only do you have to stay hydrated, but also your trail pup. Oscar, come here. You wanna drink a water, buddy? Now, when your dog needs a drink of water, you either try and pour it into their mouth. Some people try and like pour it into the cap and have their dog drink out of it, which is kind of nasty to be honest. But one of our subscribers on Instagram actually filmed this hack. You pull a rock out of the ground and then where the rock was, there's a little indentation. You fill it up with water and then your pup can drink out of it. Way better if you can find like a round rock that leaves a nice bowl in the ground. But here on Burn Peak, we 
Oh, we got a shale. But Oscar, you're hydrated, right? So part of setting up your mountain bike properly is setting the air pressure in your suspension. And to do that, you need to determine your sag. You push this little ring down, you put all your weight down on the bike and you very carefully climb off. And then you check where the ring is so you know where the suspension is sitting when you're just riding in a straight line. Now the problem is when you're getting off the bike, you tend to move the suspension around and you don't get as accurate of a reading. Especially if you're at a trailhead or something, it's a difficult process. You usually need help from a friend to hold up the bike. There's a little hack I learned from my friend Clint. Go up on the bike, cycle the suspension a few times, put your ring down, and then before you get off the bike, turn your compression all the way up. This way the suspension moves less as you're climbing off, and now you can get a much more accurate sag reading. Anyway, really simple trick. I always use it, learned it from Clint Gibbs, and uh, thanks for that one. We build a lot of outdoor mountain bike features out of wood like this one. And depending on what type of wood you build it out of, it's eventually gonna get moist, grow algae, moss, those types of things. And not only can that make the wood rot away, but it can also make the feature slippery. And so thanks to a tip from one of our subscribers, we can now treat it and delay that process just a little bit more. So what we have here is a garden sprayer filled with water and then some outdoor bleach. So what you're gonna wanna do is mix it up in the garden sprayer hit the feature once or twice a year, and it's gonna kill all that moss and algae and all the stuff that's making it slippery and making your feature not last as long. But since we've done this, we noticed a big difference in just how the planks look, and we're excited to get a little bit more life out of our features and for them to be a little bit grippier because there's less organic matter on them. Now, should you have any environmental concerns about spraying a little bit of bleach on your feature, well, you could just let it rot away and then go out and chop down a tree, build a new one. So that's it, 10 bike hacks. I know that it's been a long time since we've done one of these videos and that's because I wanna try and come up with a list of 10 original ones before we move on and we've done a lot of them already. So if you know of any hacks that I haven't done in any of my other hack videos, put them down in the description. I'll take a look at it and maybe it'll find its way into a future video. Until then, I hope you found some of these useful. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.